Oh boy. Hello, every pony. Heather Feather Song here, and man, do we have a lot to talk about with this season. I have no rhyme or reason for when I upload things. I upload whatever sounds fun to work on at the time. So keep that in mind that I do intend to do a review of The Perfect Pair relatively soon. But I really felt it was better to talk about this particular episode that, once again, people seem to be split upon. Fame and misfortune. Oh, what discord this is bringing. No, not you. Go away. At least, mildly. I am pleased that the majority find that this episode is okay, enjoyable, and even the word fascinating has been thrown around. That's great. But there is still a good chunk of people who feel personally attacked in some way, which I feel is just silly. So yeah, I wanted to get into this before it really lost its luster. So I'm not going to waste any more time and just dive right into the topic at hoof. Let's get started. A quick recap, since I'm assuming pretty much everyone has already watched this. Twilight comes across two fillies who are fighting with each other, triggering me at wasting perfectly good ice cream. Who throws a banana split? Seriously! Oh well, at least this guy gets it. Don't freaking waste a good thing. <clears throat> She pulls them aside and shares with them a lesson that we heard way back in Season 4. The two fillies reconcile, but at the same time Twilight ponders on the lesson, remembering the old journal. After going back to her castle, she finds the journal which is a little worse for wear, but still mostly in readable condition. That's when Twilight gets an idea. She calls a meeting at the Council of Friendship and reminds everyone of the old journal. Starlight uses a spell, because of course she knows just the right one to make perfect copies of the journal, revitalized and readable, I would imagine. That's when Twilight reveals she wants to publish the journal to help other ponies learn the values of friendship. Every pony agrees it'd be a good idea, and soon enough, the book is selling like hotcakes everywhere across Equestria. At first, it seems to hit its intended demographic with young foals, but soon, things go off the rails. We're here all the way from Philadelphia because we got copies of your friendship journal. Wow! How wonderful! What was your favorite friendship- Will you sign them? I only wish they'd left Rarity out. She clearly doesn't belong in that book with the rest of them. Oh, I know. <laughs> Classic Pinky. Oh, she's even funnier in real life. You've no for years! <laughs> we already covered that one a couple dozen times. We can't get enough of it! Come on, you don't want to disappoint your fans! We want answers! Yeah, we're entitled to know! What are you doing? Why, I'm creating a gown, darling! <laughs> oh, yes, it does. Every one of her friends is coming across vices. Rarity is disliked and being boycotted. Pinkie Pie isn't seen as a serious pony, just pure comic relief and everything she says is being taken as a joke. Fluttershy is having to defend herself for having to learn the same lesson over and over, which I will highlight a little bit later. Rainbow has too many fans who are hindering her work. Oh, cry me a river, Rainbow. Applejack is having to deal with an onslaught of freeloaders, and Twilight is feeling more and more guilty that it seems no one is appreciating all the lessons. All the while, Starlight is assuring the journal was a good idea, despite the chaos. I said go away, Discord! The stress gets to all six of them as it escalates, and they try to hammer in the fact that they aren't perfect to the other ponies. Who? Completely ignored, of course. However, Starlight comes back with the two fillies that Twilight encountered before, who said the journal really helped them rekindle their friendship and taught them lessons that will stick with them. They all learn that if their journal helps even just a few ponies, then all the other drama is worth it. Well, now that the basic summary is out of the way, let's talk about piece by piece, rapid fire style, before I get to my overall thoughts. First off, apparently the two fillies are recycled G3 characters. I would not know this at all till reading the episode Roundup on EQD, because I've never seen G3 or any of the other incarnations. I'm not really big on Tula Rula's design. I'm kind of thrown off by the blue tail. But I do like Coconut Creams. She's very cute. Got that out of the way, moving on. 
I will admit, I am guilty of doing the same thing that ponies are doing with Fluttershy, being annoyed why she keeps learning the same lesson over and over and couldn't identify with her. When people asked me why I didn't like her as a character, I would say sort of the same things, that she just learns the same lesson and found her overall boring. But I will defend myself a little here and say I only mentioned it when the subject came up and was directed at me. I fully understood where I couldn't sympathize, someone else could, and that was okay. So yeah, I don't feel too guilty since I at least acknowledge that my distaste was based on personal preference alone. Well, I'm creating a gown, darling. <laughs> okay, can we just appreciate this moment with Rarity? Oh, poor Rarity. When I first saw you, I thought I would hate you, because I hate the girly girly characters. But you have quickly become my second favorite. She's just so funny in so many ways. Why do all of you hate her? You're all just jealous, especially you. You're just jealous that she's more fabulous than you. Cut off that stupid ponytail, because you ain't rocking it. I'm popular, Twilight. I'm popular, and I don't like it one bit. Ha! See, haters? Applejack is not a background pony. Glad she's getting some appreciation. Though one of my friends pointed out, this could be taken as how people self-insert themselves in fanfics. Oh, you poor pony. You think you've got problems? I know I'm awesome, but I can't even go to the bathroom without some pony trying to tell me how cool I am. Oh, shut up, Rainbow, please. You already had a whole fan club, and remember the mysterious mare do well? You were really gun-ho back then on ponies telling you how awesome you are. If anything, this shouldn't be anything new to you. Now, don't get me wrong, I realize they can interfere with her work, but... What is she even still doing as a weather pony? Doesn't she make enough now as a Wonderbolt? Is she doing this for fun? In fact, hey, she's a Wonderbolt! Ponies are constantly telling her she's awesome. She should be getting this already. You don't have problems, Rainbow. Applejack and Rarity have problems because their businesses are under fire from either cancellations and or freeloaders eating up their supplies. Okay, that's my one complaint about this. Moving on. Twilight was better before she got wings. Wait, 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 wait. I know this is a joke and all, and yes, it's a funny joke. But in all seriousness, did, did the main six go back and write everything from when they first met? I mean, that's the only way they would have a reference to this information to make the comparison. Just, wow, that's some dedication. Obviously not dedicated enough to continue after Starlight joined the cast, but still. Whoop! Song time! And it's a good song. I will cover this. Hey, don't look so glum, guys. You tried. And just be glad you don't have shippers right now. All right, before getting to my final thoughts, I feel I should address the unicorn in the room. <sighs> so many of my viewers should already know that I am not a big fan of Starlight Glimmer. We've gone through our ups and downs. Loved her, hated her, and now I'm just kind of neutral towards her. She's... eh. But... I will admit, she was used perfectly here. In fact, if I could have a moment with Starlight... Come here, Starlight. Let's just get one thing straight. I don't really like you. I tolerate you. I know you have fans, though, so you could care less if I did. Maybe my opinion will change one day if I learn some freaking more backstory. Because what we got for Season 5 finale... It's not enough for me. But until then, I'm calling a truce. Because I won't lie, there have been some, only some, enjoyable moments with you this season. And you were okay. Hell, I'll even throw you a bone and say you were a pretty good addition for this particular episode. And that's not easy for me to say. So, yeah. I'll stop complaining, cause it's pretty dang clear you're not going away. But, till we know more about your past, you're just going to be a toleration, with some decent to even okay moments once in a while. 
I think that's fair. Now get out of here before I change my mind and sick Princess Deadpool on you. In all seriousness, Starlight provided a much-needed voice of reason throughout the episode, playing a part in representing members of the fandom that remind the creators of the positives with their work and what it can really do for others, and exactly who they are wanting to inspire to begin with. It made sense she provided a good foil to some of the other crazed fanboys that were stalking the main six, and overall was pretty much needed to serve the plot. Again, as much as it pains me to say this, but good job, Starlight. <sighs> Ugh, that did not feel right. <clears throat> okay, now that that's all done, here are my overall thoughts. I love this episode. I find it funny and well-meaning, but overall, I feel it is an episode that is needed. Here's the thing, guys. If you feel insulted by this episode, then that is a clear sign that you are the very archetype that they are satirizing. It is a healthy piece of humble pie to make you choke down that humility you've been ignoring. And for those that don't identify with these examples but still find it cringy, yes, I know, we don't like to be reminded of the negative parts in our communities, but I find it's important to be reminded so that we can work on making a positive environment or at least put more focus on it. Now, I am aware that there seems to be some controversy with M.A. Larson. From what I understand, this was a concept he drafted but never finished but was picked up later. He seems to not really hold high regard for this episode. But Mr. Larson, if I may, I think this is perfect, especially with you as its writer. M.A. Larson was behind the 100th episode, the love letter to the Brony fandom. I feel that it's more than fitting for him to have a part in this episode, the reality check of the fandom. There is something so poetic to me in having M.A. Larson responsible for both. Even if he didn't have any intention to bring fame and misfortune to life, I'm glad it was. Because as I said, this isn't an episode many would want, but it is needed. Don't get me wrong, I am aware that there are many who are just so passionate, and that's okay. But there is a time and a place to express it. As the main six say, they aren't flawless. This show isn't flawless. But it is its flaws that make it just as amazing as its successes. If the show was flawless, then it would be just another boring show where conflict never happens ever. The show staff aren't perfect. The voice actors aren't perfect. And yes, even the creators and writers are not perfect. Heather, aren't you at least a little upset? I mean, they take a stab at reviewers and analysts. Not at all. I am aware they take my cartoons too seriously. And from what I can see, other reviewers and analysts share my opinion. I know I take things off the rails, but that's part of the fun for me and for my amusement alone. I'm not going to actually go up to one of the writers and constantly critique them on how I think it would be better to their faces. No real reviewer or analyst is going to actually do that. Because I know the show isn't for me. It's fun to imagine, sure, when it comes to the what-ifs, but at the end of the day, it's not for me or any one person. That's why I always ensure everything I say is my opinion alone, because someone else is viable to disagree with me. That's how fiction works. Each person takes something else away from it. I, at least, can laugh at my open acceptance that I think a little too much about cartoon horses from time to time. So no, I am not insulted in the least. It's a good contrast to the 100th episode and a good reminder to take a chill pill once in a while. At least, that's how I feel. And there we go. That is my review and thoughts on fame and misfortune. But what do you guys think? Were any of you personally insulted, or did you find it a fun episode all the same? Love to read your thoughts in the comments below. Keep an eye out for more videos coming hopefully soon. 
I'm Heather Feathersong, and before we go, just remember, in fiction, you are never wrong. You just see things differently than the person next to you. So keep your mind open like an open book. Till next time! <laughs>